Well, the visit of West Ham had been eagerly awaited. Steve Koppel kept faith with Dean Morgan and Dave Kitson up front. Commentary from Ross Dyer. Well, the banners are out. For neutrals, they might seem a little excessive or somewhat unnecessary. They are meant simply to unnerve Reading's ex-leader and make him feel as unwelcome as possible back in a stadium where for four years they adored him. Well, he felt that he had a better chance with West Ham of getting into the Premiership. They lie five places, just three points better off than Reading. It's too tight to call in and amongst the playoffs. So possession, as that man knows, is nine-tenths of the law. It came off some more at Rio Coca. First touch let him down, and Graham Murty, as ever, sniffing around to prize the ball away. Etherington, Gillingham found out what he could do with the ball at his feet last week, and he's been sent over by Stephen Sidwell. Free kick has been called. Etherington got away from Brooker, not Sidwell. Well, John Harley's made his mark from range before, and Reading will worry about his left foot being behind this. Two men in the West Ham wall. It's not Harley, it was Harewood, who cleverly brought a response from Jamie Ashdown. A Reading's goalkeeper who looks a natural just four games into his recent tenure in place of Marcus Harneman. It was a good shift to immobilise the wall, but Jamie Ashdown's flying palms were in the way. Murty, his turn brought him a second or two away from Zamora. Morgan held that up well, under challenge from Melville, and then Sidwell went over the top and earns the free kick. Sidwell was sent off last Saturday. Solarco's hit. And I think it took the flick off Repka. I'm not sure the Czech really knew about the destination of the ball after he made contact. Murty picks it up, and Murty will strike. Spilled by the goalkeeper, Kitson. A double save from Stephen Bywater. And Dave Kitson is denied on the follow-up. Graham Murty, you could see exactly what he was going to do with that. Goalkeeper not convincing, but second time of asking. He stood up, reacting quickly. Was Kitson offside as well from the original strike? Possibly yes. Zamora. It's been a couple of years since he scored against Reading. And he might have picked out Connolly! who was a few inches away from opening the scoring. Called for the ball, pinpoint delivery, got there first ahead of Jamie Ashdown, but there was enough attention from the goalkeeper to put him off. Now check the substitution board, because I think, unless I or indeed Marlon Harewood is mistaken, that he's being substituted inside the opening half hour. His reaction suggests he's clearly not injured, but Alan Pardew, who is fond of, shall we say, arcane tactics, is about to withdraw the First Division's leading scorer in place of a man who hasn't yet netted for West Ham. Peter Grant unable to offer an explanation to West Ham's star man. Adam Nowland is on, and Alan Pardew clearly sees something he doesn't like as does Marlon Harewood. Still getting a talking to from Peter Grant, and he will have to find a space on that bench to warm his legs for the rest of the afternoon. Morgan, Daly at his back. Good distribution to Murty. He's tried to find him again, and it might run all the way through Kitson! It's Reading! Dave Kitson scores for the first time at the Medeski against the club's former manager. Inquiry for Alan Pardew there. Christian Daly made absolutely no attempt to challenge for the ball forward. He was keeping an eye on Dean Morgan. Andy Melville was supposed to be doing the same to Dave Kitson. The reality is, though, not close enough. Slow off the mark, deceived by the curve and the bounce of the ball, and Dave Kitson must take credit for reaching it. Once he'd done that, it was just a toe poke. 
physical challenge from Repka and Hughes and Sidwell now involved and even Luda Wusu. Thomas Repka brings with him a reputation which is well deserved. Hardly ever does a match pass off without incident involving that man. And the name will be taken. He got himself in all sorts of bother at Upton Park last week against Gillingham. Harper, missed by everyone, Kitson! Oh my word! 2-0! And Dave Kitson has done it either side of half-time! Straight from the foul and the indiscretion from Thomas Repka. But if the first goal showed good striking reactions, then that one proves they are purely instinctive. Uncertainty in West Ham's box soon put to rest with one crippling swing of Dave Kitson's boot. And he's discovering just how you win your home fans over. Hutchison, good head. Dean. Back to Dean. Rio Coca trying to join in. Cross is decent. Flick from Inga Marsen. And at the back stick was Bobby Zamora, who was some way off. West Ham need a resurgence soon, though. Steve Cobble just asked his fans to remember Alan Pardew isn't on the field today. And to get behind the 11 who are for Reading, he's got serious problems in this match. Daly's head. Sidwell did well to lean in and win it over Carrick, and Kitson has sprayed it beautifully into the path of Solarco, who had the chance to take it on a more direct route. They still look bothered, don't they? Kevin Dillon and Steve Koppel must sense that the whistle is close. The more proud flags being shown now. They have a positive way of channeling it as well towards Dave Kitson and to their Reading team. West Ham slipped to a defeat that perhaps was written in the manager's stars. Alan Pardew had the perfect chance to emphasise his move to the East End was the right one. But in a sense, it was a game where his motivation was outnumbered by those sporting the blue and white of Reading. Dave Kitson makes a Medeski name for his scoring talents with two excellently taken goals. They were enough, 2-0 the score, and Alan Pardew's fleeting return is a futile one.